So today we're going to be going over the director example shows, and you may not know that there are example shows, because uh, I find a lot of people don't, and they're a great way to learn how to use directors. So uh, here's how you access them. You go to frightideas.com slash examples.html right here, and you get this page with all these different shows uh, right here, and you can see they have numbers next to them, and if you click this, you get a little pop-up window that explains what each show does. So you can go through and kind of read up and get an idea of what the shows do, but we're going to kind of go through uh, the step-by-step so you can see what's happening. So you can see here inputs, uh, what the inputs and outputs are set to, how to customize it, and more details and everything like that. So, And this is example 201, which is important to remember. So uh, you come over here to your director program, you hit open, you go down to download a show, blink, and you hit 201. Now I already have the show, so it's going to ask me if I want to override it, and I'll say yes. And it, as you can see here, it's pointing to where it is in the shows, and there it is, and we select, and here it is. So, one of the things I always like to do first is hit settings to fly this out so I can keep an eye on everything here. And I go over to the show settings tab to see what's going on. All of these have been clicked as a single shot input. These six guys here. Oh, by the way, I want to mention something. Over here on this examples thing, it says supports up to six buttons or sensors. Now, that's that's this particular show is programmed for six buttons or sensors, but you can do all eight if you wanted to. So don't let this fool you. You can use more than six in a show like this, just so you know. So uh, these are set for single shot, and as you remember in the last video, that means that if the button is being held down, it won't loop. It'll just count as one single press instead of multiple presses, like that. And the normally closed output here is uh, means that that's a maglock, most likely. And so that means that this this uh, output here is on at all times until this blue field gets filled in. We'll talk about that later. Also, you'll notice there's only two outputs being used in this show. So 16 output controller is a little bit overkill. You probably don't need this. You probably don't even need a flex max. You could use a flex because... Um, no, actually, I take that back. You can't because they only have two inputs. So uh, you actually need a flex max for this, but you would only need the four output for that. So flexes only have two inputs. Uh, so forget I said that. <laughs> so you go over to scene settings and uh, not, let's see what's over here. Uh, not much is happening here. All the stuff is default just like this. All these only changes here. Everything else is fairly default. And you'll notice uh, we're on the success scene. So we need to go to the idle ambient, the, the first scene that your controller would start on. So again, nothing really is happening here except for this. Interruptible by one has been checked. After scene go to is ready to go to itself, as you can see here. Now you can either uh, have it tell it to go specifically to this scene, or you can have it say this scene. And ambient is the only one that uh, the ambient scenes are the only ones that for some reason say this scene. Everything else has to be specific to this. For some reason, don't know why. Anyway, so what's happening is this is waiting for input one to go to scene one, or as I call it, scene one, input one. So now this goes here, and you'll notice that this is set for three seconds. This is a three second timer. And so empty scenes like this can be used as timers. And what's happening is if you don't hit button two by the by three seconds, it's going to go back to the ambient scene. It's gonna reset itself, which means you have to start the puzzle over again. You'll also notice other input go to is also set to the ambient idle scene. So if you hit any button other than two in this situation, then you go back to the start and have to restart the whole puzzle over, or if you don't do it within three seconds. So that's what's happening there. And all of these uh, uh, scene uh, input one, two, three, four, five, uh, these are all basically clones of each other, right? So three is here and it's, you know, you go to input two, it's waiting for input three. Uh, you go to input four, and it's waiting for input five. So these are all just kind of the same. Everything is the same until you hit input five itself. Now you hit six, and this goes to your success scene, which is uh, here. You'll notice that this is turned on, which means that you are now ignite, uh, like igniting, lighting up a uh, an LED because it says wind light, and you're unlocking your mag lock here because this means to turn it off because it was set for normally closed. So this now is opening your mag lock right here. And this is all happening for five seconds. And uh, you'll notice nothing else is capable of happening here. Uh, and what's happened is after scene go to is set to idle. So this actually resets itself. 
Uh, it is it is set to auto reset. So if you hit the buttons, now obviously you don't want to set this up as like let's say you have six buttons on a panel. You obviously wouldn't have the code be one two three four five six, right? You would have it be like five two one six whatever. You would just you would change this to be to fit where or align the buttons in a different order than left to right. So so anyway, uh, this has re auto reset itself. Now if for some reason you don't want it to auto reset. What you can do is you can come down here to after scene go to this is set for ambient one wait for reset so now when this is done this would go to this scene and this just sit here and loops continuously and your mag lock stays unlocked so people can't close the door and lock each other in or something like that which is always a good practice have your mag lock stay powered off until the game is done this is very important and fire marshals love this by the way so now this is waiting for input seven, which would then take us to reset. And all this does is this is like a half second, uh, if that, uh, just scene that resets everything back to kind of where it was and then shoots us back to idle, which is now the game waiting state. So this is just a very simple input sequence show. Nothing, nothing too fancy here, and that's how it works. All right, now we're going to move on to uh, example 202 here, which has the input sequence. It's the same thing, same concept as this, but it has feedback. It has sound effects and it has lights and stuff like that. So uh, we're going to take a look at that. Same kind of thing. Download a show, 202. I'm going to override it, of course. And then we go up and boom, there it is. All right, let's fly that out. So now show settings. Let's take a look. Single shot inputs like last time. Uh, normally closed output two like last time, but we've added this other one here. We've got output three is normally on uh, all the time. Normally closed, sorry. Uh, so that means if you look over here, uh, our third input is a red light, which means it's just a red light that is on all the time un unless something happens. And uh, we only, again, we only have three outputs, so that means you only would need a four output flex max if you were doing this scene as is, basically. Scene settings, as you can see here, uh, we're using the multi-input go-to in this situation instead of interruptible by. And uh, th in this particular show, you actually, this is not necessary. You still could use interruptible by, but I think this is just showing you it's you can use multi-input go-to to accomplish the exact same thing uh, that you could up here, right? So these are, right now, these are interchangeable. If you needed the sequence to be something like press button one, then press button three and four, then press button six and one together, that's what you would be using multi-input go to for, is if you needed to have multiple inputs triggering a scene. So, uh, but we won't, we have to worry about that right now. We're just gonna go with what's here. You'll notice that there is a uh, other input. So if you hit any input other than this, you're gonna go to uh, what's called the bad scene. And of course, this scene is just looping itself. So let's take a look at the breakdown here. Uh, you've got wait for reset, which was what we had last scene. If you want to do the manual reset, you have input one, uh, zero as a, as the good input. And then input one, one is the bad input. And then these just repeat again. These are all just repeating each other from, uh, like the other show. These are all copy and paste of each other. And then you have your success scene. You have your fail scene, which means something has not, which is the opposite of success, clearly. Uh, but that means something has not happened. And then you have your reset scene right here, just like the last show. So uh, if you, if we're looking here, waiting in our idle scene, and we hit in multi-input go to one, and it goes to good one, you'll see here that this is on. And when I hit this button, it plays a sound effect, and you'll notice it just blinks the red light. So this is giving you a feedback that the button has been pressed by blinking the red light and playing a sound effect. And apparently, um, there's also this, uh, this little rando uh, output, rogue output here that I'm guessing they left in just to show that you could have something else going on. And uh, if we look over here, you can see that if you don't, if you don't put in the output, if you don't hit the next button, input two, after three seconds, you're going to go to a fail scene. And also, if you hit a bad, if you hit a, the, another button, you go to what's called the bad scene. Uh, which is like this or this. Uh, we'll just go to bad one. And it does the same thing as good one. Plays the same sound effect, lights the same light. 
Uh, but what happens is at the end, you go to the fail scene, which means uh, the puzzle has failed. You've done something incorrectly. And this is the fail scene right there. And so now when this is over, it goes back to idle, which means you just start the whole process over again. All right, same thing, start from one. So uh, you hit the good button. If you don't hit the next right button in three seconds, you go to the fail scene immediately. Um, and if you hit the incorrect, uh, you get that feedback of the button, but you then go to the fail scene. Um, I do want to point out some, a couple things here. One, you technically don't need a bad scene for every scene. You could just have one bad scene uh, because these are all set up to go to other input go to. So you could just have a bad scene, right? You could set up an ambient one, two and have it be the bad scene uh, unless something different happens for each bad scene. If you press this and one of the other outputs does something different, similar to what's going on here in the good scene. So you'll notice here, this output would be like doing something here and then good two would be doing something here. So uh, if you had to have something different happening on each bad scene, you could you would need each one of these to be different. But the way this is set up, you technically would only need one bad scene to then go to the fail scene. And what I would also suggest uh, here, because you've got this, you had a three seconds here, and technically you can't enter another input after this. I mean, technically, well, it says here you can, uh, but... I would make this scene a lot shorter because waiting three seconds to find out if you screwed up or not uh, is 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 a little much, I feel personally, from just making games. So I would shorten the bad scene down a bit so you immediately know if you failed. So after that button press, the fail scene would play immediately instead of hitting the button, waiting three seconds, then finding out you failed. Uh, that's just me, though. So anyway, uh, going back... Everything is on repeat. Hit this, hit this, hit this, hit this, hit this, hit this, hit this. Sound effects, lights. And then, of course, you hit your success scene. And now the red light goes off. Your mag lock unlocks. Your green light turns on. And... Congratulations. You play a weird sound effect uh, right there. Congratulations. And again, this is set up to go idle. This is set to go back to self-reset. Resets itself like this. And again, you can change this, just like the last show to go to your waiting for reset scene. So one more time is now sitting here. Everything is still in, in the success success scene setup. And now you're just waiting for button seven to be pressed to go to your reset scene. And your reset scene is then going to go to here. Uh, now technically, technically you don't need this reset scene, by the way. You don't need this waiting to reset loop. Uh, you could here when you press button uh you can have the you can so instead so right here we're going from button we're going from we're going to input seven that's the reason for that is that we're doing interruptible buy technically you could use multi input go to to go to idle from here like that you could just hit this to this and it would just reset for you so that's just a, also something that i'm showing you you don't need technically a reset scene like we have here so there you go and that is input sequence with feedback. All right, so the next show is called Four Keys. And as you can see from the write-up here, it says trigger different scenes and the number of keys found has increased and will not trigger again if the same key is used in another switch. It can also be used with like buttons and sensors and things like that. So let's take a look at this. Uh, let's look at our show scenes, settings, uh, normally closed output, which means we have a mag lock here. And we have this thing here that says in idle. And you'll also notice that the show scene has been fixed like it is at a fixed uh it cannot move from that particular spot uh and that's really about it on here it looks like let's go to scene settings <clears throat> you'll see th again the fixed length is at five seconds uh and uh you can see here that we're using multi input go to uh for this as well as this thing right here that i didn't really talk about too much last time uh because it really needs to be used in this context to understand so you have the all uh, one of the selected inputs. So right now it's looking for one of these selected inputs. Uh, and so this means these can be done uh, out of order, right? So that means we're looking for all four, but this with you using this, that means that one of them can do something. So it's so we have multiple uh, options is what's going on here, right? And then uh, everything else seems to be uh, normal. You know, your after scene is doing its looping thing. And uh, whatever this is, this in idle, 
uh, whatever this is actually supposed to be, um, is just on right now. Okay. So let's say we clicked on, or we, we inserted key one. One key in. Boom. One key in. It plays a sound effect. One key inserted. <laughs> right there. Uh, <clears throat> so now uh, it is waiting for two of the selected inputs to have to have been done, right? So right now, let's say key one has been done, right? So that one has been done and uh, there's not much, and right now it's doing this, it's going to wait for two keys. You'll notice here, uh, after this scene is done, uh, and this is a, a fairly long scene. This is like a 45 second scene right here, or excuse me, 38 second scene specifically, I guess. Uh, but after this scene, it's going to wait for two keys right here. And uh, you'll see the same kind of thing is happening right here. One key in. Now, obviously, uh, chances are something like this, this kind of game, you're not going to have all the keys, right? It's not like pressing buttons or it's like button one, button two, button three, button four. Uh, chances are you're going to, it's like each key is in a puzzle that has to be solved. So it's okay to have your scene be this long right now. Um, it doesn't have to be like five seconds or as the, to the show length or anything like that. Um, so in case you're wondering why this is so long, that's why. Because you won't be like put, getting all the keys at once. All right. But this is still set for two keys in right here. You'll notice that just in case for some reason that does happen, this is still ready to go. But chances are you won't have it. So now it's just basically going to the waiting for two keys. So this is set up here. And I, this is probably also set up this way here so in case you're resetting the room or have to play through it something like that this is so the uh, game masters can go through it fast they can get through the, the the show pretty quickly right there so again you go to wait for two keys which essentially this is now you're a new idol this is a this is like idol two is what it's doing um because it is stu it is looping on itself and it's waiting for two of the inputs to be found right so this is this is one of those games where you can have like parallel gameplay where multiple puzzles can be happening which means you could open up like a puzzle you could open up a puzzle for key four one game but then somebody might get the puzzle for key three quicker uh in a different game so that's that's kind of what's happening here so again, say again. This is the same thing, but now you're. It's looking for two of the selected inputs, uh, and so now two keys in, and which plays your sound effect. Two keys inserted. Right. Uh, and again, now it's waiting for three keys, and you know most of these kinds of shows are just, uh, just the same thing over and over again, uh, except in this case it's just escalating each scene. So now it's waiting for three of the keys to be done. Right. So like, let's say that. Uh, you and, the, and so what's happening here is even if you have these other two and you and you turn these two, it will not do anything until three inputs have been triggered, right? So if it's because two have been triggered, they're not going to keep triggering uh, because it's not looking for three of the inputs uh, like that. So just so you know, that's what that means. Again, go through all the same stuff: three keys, four keys. So once uh, once all four keys are in, this is waiting for four keys. And uh, you'll notice here this is changed to all selected inputs. So now all four of these have to be done. Uh, you could go to four of this. You could just do this. You could do four of the selected inputs, but that's no reason when you could just do all. Okay. So now it goes to four keys in. This plays your success uh, sound effect. Open your maglock. All four keys have been inserted. So there you go. And uh, then the this is this goes to a wait for reset scene, which is here like this, uh, and the maglock is still open, and of course the uh, it loops on itself and it's waiting for uh, scene. You can do interruptible by eight, which is now your reset scene to go back to your idle scene, just like the other shows have done like that. So uh, this. Uh, this show is basically mainly to show you how this function works. And it is the, uh, the selected inputs drop down is basically what this is for. So, uh, that's, it's a good thing to have when you're, when you need inputs that are out of order. All right. So there you go. That is the 203 show. All right. On to the next show, which is find the artifacts. This is if you have like, let's say some, uh, items with, uh, RFID or, um, 
read switch or uh, just any kind of sensors and stuff like that. This is this is this would be a good one. For, this is a good one for RFID uh, type like stuff. Like if you have little statues, you have to put places. So let's take a look at it. Uh, so as usual, show settings. Let's see our normally closed outputs. We have a maglock, as you can see here. <laughs> this is going on, and uh, nothing else really seems to be. Uh, Nothing really seems to be going on. There, there is some dimming that has been enabled here. I don't know if that's just because. Uh, and we'll go to scene settings. And you'll notice we're back to the interruptibles here, like this. We also have, you'll notice, re-enable. The re-enable inputs has been checked here. Okay, so we'll, let's, uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, let's see here. So we're uh, in our ambient scene. We're doing our waiting thing going through and of course interruptible by now when multiple of these are checked that means you can have multiple uh things happen right so any number of these can just will do something so let's see uh we're gonna go let's go to artifact one which is input one like this and we have a sound effect you have found artifact number one there you go and uh, you'll notice that all the interruptibles are off now and uh and this has now disabled input one Okay, uh, and something I did not mention last show that I want to point out here, uh, you will notice that it says, note that disabled inputs are still used for multi-input to go to. So when you disable the inputs, it only affects interruptible by uh, in case you need to have multiple inputs because if, uh, it's, it was explained to me uh, why, but uh, just so you're aware, it it's, can still affect multi-input go to. it. Uh, it doesn't affect inter it affects interruptible by it does not affect multiple the input go to just so you're aware of that so anyway once artifact one has been placed and the sound effect has been placed it is now going to a scene called wait for next and input one can no longer be triggered via this all right so now we're going to wait for next you'll see here and now it is uh it is now waiting for all of these right so what happens is um to go to success it is waiting for all six artifacts to be placed but because uh the uh we turned off input one this scene can no longer be triggered uh can no even though it's checked it can no longer be triggered it's now just uh just dead essentially it's dead to us so now it's waiting for all the other ones so it's the same same idea you hit artifact two and boom and again you have found artifact number two there you go artifact number two has been found and the same same thing has happened just the input has been disabled but it is kept alive for a multi-input and now we're going to wait for next and it's just it's just uh it's just a whole bunch of that it's a whole bunch of just waiting for it's the same thing over and over again so even though the inputs the interruptible buys can't trigger again once all six of these are found we will jump to success which is sitting here in ambient two and here's our success scene and you'll notice that uh it will turn on a light or something here like this is probably an led of some sorts and then it'll after uh, about mm, three ish seconds it unlocks the door so this would also probably have a sound effect you hear like a whoosh or a noise and then the door would unlock which is always nice you don't always have to have the door pop immediately you can choose when it when it pops open uh, to match with a sound effect or a uh, or a video or something like that, so uh, so now you'll notice down here we've after the scene we go to wait for reset, which is an ambient three, and again all these are open and you've got a sound effect playing. Congratulations, you have located all six artifacts. Okay, so that's right there. Now, technically, that in my opinion, that's where that sound effect should be here on the success scene, but. Either way, uh, it still it still works, right? <laughs> uh, so now it is sitting here waiting for a reset, uh, and and yeah, it's weird that actually that's this sound effect should be over here on success. I don't know why it isn't because what's going to happen is this is waiting for reset. It's going to constantly tr it's going to loop and constantly play this sound effect. So I think that was a mess up uh, on on their end, but you get the idea. This this sound effect should be in the previous scene. So just so you know. Uh, but anyway, yeah, now this is waiting for reset. Now you'll in this, uh, and then of course input seven is your reset. Reset scene goes to your first ready scene, and you'll notice 
that this is why all the inputs have been re-enabled because technically they have all been disabled. So that is one thing to remember when you disable your inputs or outputs, make sure to re-enable them in your reset scene or your, or your start scene right here because otherwise they ain't gonna do anything. So uh, this, this, this is pretty pretty straightforward scene um, but and you can get the idea of what's going on here. This is just showing you how you can have multiple, uh, you know, things happen, different a scene for each uh, each artifact out of order. Again, this is an out of order puzzle, not you don't define them in order. Uh, so there you go. Show 205, uh, this is the two input secret code, and it's an eight step code using only two inputs. So technically you could just use a flex for this. You wouldn't need a flex max for this uh, because it just uses two inputs, but then you wouldn't have a reset button if you wanted that. It would have, you'd have to program it to auto reset itself. So, and you can see the combination of course is very simple. It's just a whole bunch of ones and twos uh, technically. Uh, but if you have multiple inputs and all that stuff. So it's, uh, we used a show like this uh, to do a video game arcade cabinet. Uh, so it was doing, um, it was a controller. So the controller was like, it was up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA start because we're nerds. And so each press, uh, it was essentially what you're about to see here. So. Uh, the idle scene is waiting for this. You'll notice that here is this. Oh, let's look at our show settings first. Uh, single shot input is here, so it, it won't accidentally detect um, multiple inputs, multiple hits. And, of course, your mag lock there. Right there, mag lock. Okay. Uh, let's see. So we're, wait we're sitting in our idle state, and we are waiting for input one and to go to step two. All right, and step two is input one. Uh, again, this could have been used here, but whatever. But what's interesting about this is, is you'll notice that when you do this, you know, you've got, you can actually have, you have something turn on or whatever is going on here. Uh, so by pressing what's, uh, what's happening here is, is because I saw, you saw the code earlier. The code is one, one, two, one, da, 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 right? So right now it's looking for input one and then it's looking for input one again, which then will take us to step three. And now it's looking for input two. And now it is looking again for input one. And then it will look for input two again. So it's, as you can see, it's you're basically hitting two buttons in a, just a certain sequence. Um, and down here, you'll notice if you hit the wrong button, it will take you to back to the idle state and you have to start all over again. So if this is something where you, again, you're having some sort of controller or multiple buttons, like let's say you have three buttons and you need them done in a certain, like, you know, a certain order, uh, like a, kind of like a code, you know, like a, almost like a keypad, but not <laughs> kind of thing. Uh, actually, you could use this. Let's say you had your own custom keypad set up, like uh, that was not a, a normal keypad matrix. This is how you could do a keypad code uh, if it was set up like some sort of stone tablet or something like that. So... Uh, so again, everything you just, it's a, again, it's a, it's a little bit of the same thing. You're just going through each one of these, uh, inputting between one and two here. And you'll notice that, uh, here, this changes to one of the selected inputs. Um, I'm not entirely sure why it just does, um, because you only have one input, but you'll notice when you finally get to that last scene, basically each each button press is its own scene. Right? So you could put a sound effect here, you could put lights happening, stuff like that. But anyway, when you get to that last one, when you've done the correct thing, it'll take you up to here and give you your pass. Congratulations. Like that, maglock opens, light lights up, bibbidi bobbidi boo magic. And then of course this then goes to wait for reset, uh, which is right here. And then this is of course is waiting for input eight uh, to go uh, to... Uh, Input eight to go to idle, right? This is what we talked about earlier, using something like this to skip a reset scene and just take you right to here, right? So, uh, and you'll notice this is uh, looking for step two, right? Because technically um, it's waiting for step two. So it's technically step one. Uh, it, the, the, the naming is a little, a little odd because technically you are here so it goes to step two, but it's technically waiting for step one. It's very, it's very interesting. You can, again, you can name these whatever you want, whatever makes sense to you, uh, within within character limits stuff. But don't don't name them something ridiculously long, because um, it's not good for it. So uh, that is the input secret code.
Now we're going to go into this multiple code show. This is a more involved version of the two input secret code, similar to how uh, input sequence with feedback was different from simple input sequence, just so you know. So let's look at our show settings here. Uh, single shot inputs for one, two, three, four, as you can see there. Nothing else really going on here. We have interruptible by in the ambient scene. Uh, and uh, we have this special function going on here that is, it says reset all scenes to dash zero. And what that means is when one of these buttons is pressed, it forces, uh, it forces every scene pretty much uh, or that particular scene, uh, all scenes actually, to jump to dot zero. So uh, you're at input one dash zero will reset to dash zero, two, two dash zero, they'll all reset back to there. That's just to force everything back to where it basically back to one where it needs to be. So you've got your interruptibles here, right? And because you have all these different codes, you have code one, two, three, one, two, four, three, two, three, one, four, all, you have all these different codes, but the, each one starts with a, with a you know, one of these numbers, one, two, or three, or four. So you can pit, start at any of these positions right here. And I believe five and six are for reset and stuff like that. So ignore five and six for now. Uh, so one, two, three, four. Uh, so if you start at four, um, or actually let's start at one. So we'll start at one, and one, uh, each button press is its own scene, right? So, uh, and you'll notice each scene here uh, is our, each button, or is, uh, excuse me, each particular button press is under its own scene. That's why you have input one, zero, one, 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 two, one, three, like that. Uh, and the interruptibles started off by going to the start of the scene. So input one goes to input one, input two goes to input two at the start of this scene. But if we go to the next scene, we're now using multi input go to. Uh, because otherwise, if we hit two here, we'd end up in a different place. Uh, so that's why we jump from one to the other. So now it's just waiting for the button presses in a particular order. And of course, any other input will take us back to ambient idle, as you can see here. Uh, and then after scene go to is ambient next scene uh, here, uh, which of course is just the idle scene. That's all that means. It's like, it's like, hey, go to the next scene. And that's just going to be idle. So this should be idle instead of next scene, but whatever. So if, if you don't enter the code quick enough, you end up going back to start, essentially. So again, one, two, three, four. And then you have this final scene here that is the win state that turns on an output. Let's say it turns on an LED or something like that. And then it goes back to idle. It'll jump back to the idle state. And now it's waiting for another code to do something. And it, again, it is just more of the same thing over and over again. So now, uh, let's say uh, you need this code. You go to 2314, right? So you start with 2, and now it says hit 3. It's waiting for 3, and then it's waiting for 1, and then it's waiting for 4. <clears throat> and again, every screw up, either every screw up will take you back to idle, or you'll win. And it's just the same thing over and over and over again. So this is not one of those things that is technically a, uh, that is a finish the puzzle and unlock a door. This is put in a code, get a piece of information, play a video, something like that. And you use these four codes to accomplish various things to like open boxes that get you pieces. So like something like this would be to be used in conjunction with the artifacts scene that we just did a little bit ago where you would get it you would get an artifact from from a from a box after you hit this code and then you would put that in place etc 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 so uh this one's pretty self-explanatory because it's based off the last one it's just a little more involved and of course the wind states could have sound effects and lights and things like that all right so this show is very interesting i've never actually seen this in a room but uh i'm sure it exists somewhere so this is the key slide, and you have a key. Uh, let's say it's strung across some cables through like a, a cabinet or something like that. You have two locks, and you have to unlock both keys in a certain amount of time, uh, or else the thing resets itself, right? So let's take a look at that. Uh, here's your idle state, and uh, technically this is just sitting here waiting for uh, when the game boots up. So right now, uh, what's happening is because of the show settings here, you'll notice single shot inputs and your normally closed output five, which is your uh, mag lock kind of thing or whatever it is. So that's your mag lock. It is open currently because this blue field has been filled in. And so this is just sitting here waiting. 
and what's your uh and so this scene is waiting this this is essentially kind of a reset scene because the actual game start is input three input three now locks everything and resets the game this is kind of the this is your starting position basically okay so you'll notice here that we have key one red key one green key two key red green and so this is these are leds and this means these are red this is a red led and this is on right now these are both red this lets you know when you've unlocked something correctly and here is your interruptible buy and there's two paths uh this game is set up uh, for with two paths and there's a right way and a wrong way. So we're, let's walk through the, the right way first. Okay. So the right way starts off with input one, which would be lock one. So you have now unlocked lock one. And you'll notice that it is correct because now the green lights. You unlock it, that light turns green, and a timer starts. And you're like, oh crap, we need to get this done in five and a half seconds, which seems a little short to me. But you can obviously uh, elongate that because uh, it gives you this you'll notice the audio is way longer than the scene is uh, and that's so you can adjust this for yourself like if you need to give them 10 seconds 20 seconds to get through the scene that's what that's about just so you know so then uh, you'll notice here input 2 which is the second lock leads us to success right uh, which is here uh, no I'm sorry uh, that's that's if you're using interruptible by you'll know uh, this this input two goes to success so there's your success scene right here and you'll notice uh, both outputs are green people are happy that you succeeded <laughs> and now at the end that scene it goes to your unlock scene uh, which means that your your mag lock is unlocked and your lights are green <laughs> lights are green trap is clean and now this just sits looping in this state until you relock the room with this button input three interruptible by three goes back to your lock state and so now the game is reset so there is a there's a there's a false path that you can disable this you can make this not a thing if you don't want to and they talk about it in the uh in the little write-up so if you hit this we'll see what happens you end up going the wrong way uh but uh key two gets unlocked you'll see here uh, this turns green because it's unlocked, but when you try to do input one, uh, and you'll also notice here after the scene, uh, it goes to wrong way slow, which means you've gone the wrong way. Uh, and one thing you'll notice to have over here when you're at this thing, uh, after scene uh, go to, if you don't do this a certain amount of time, you end up going to the too slow uh, scene like this, which gives you... <laughs> that sound effect so that way you know oh i didn't do that fast enough or whatever and then it resets itself um but anyway so if you don't get this done at the right time this goes to wrong way slow which means you were too slow and it plays a sound effect the old the old trusty rusty sad trombone and then that goes back and locks everything and resets it uh if you uh if you do it this way and you actually jump it over to uh, wrong way end you also end up again with your sad trombone because you've done it incorrectly so there's a right path and a wrong path and uh, you can get rid of the wrong path if necessary so it's a very interesting physical uh, puzzle i'd like to see somebody make actually this is another interesting puzzle this almost sounds like a, it starts out sounding like a simon says type puzzle but it ends up not being one uh, you can do Simon Says type puzzles, by the way, in Director. It's, we, uh, we've done it, and it works. So so you have uh, lights. Let's say you have six LEDs and with or light-up buttons, and you have to figure out which light came on last and hit the button that lit up last, which is very interesting because, again, this is like one of these puzzles I've never actually seen in a room, uh, and it's very, very, it seems very unique because of that. So uh, let's take a look at what's going on nothing going on here uh everything is is as as it should be here and then over here our scene settings uh nothing interesting here except for that so uh right now idle is just sitting idle <laughs> as you'll notice uh and it is uh this is the this is button seven is the game start so let's say that this is just sitting this your controller is just chilling out and when and then some another another puzzle activates this it goes to start so now the game is ready to go this is technically the start of the game and 
uh, so this is just kind of here as a buffer scene. Technically, you wouldn't need this. You could use a multi-input go-to to just jump right to pattern one intro, but this is just the way they've done it. Uh, so you go to pattern one intro, and this gives you a little audio. Um, basically, this is kind of setting up a scene. Uh, this is using scenes to kind of give you more context. So pattern one intro is level one. Tells you it's level one, and at the end of that, it shows you the lights. And you'll notice here, here is your output. Da 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 da. Uh, the last one is output one here, but this would light up. Meh, 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 bam. So after that. It's going to a waiting scene now. It's like okay, I've showed you the, I've showed you what you need. Do something, and now it's just waiting for you to hit the right button. So it's waiting for button one. Uh, of course, if you don't do it quick enough, uh, you end up failing. You have to do it. It's it's another timed puzzle. So you end up going here and fail, and then it goes back to the light pattern. It starts over. But if you hit the right button, you go to this scene. And you win, yay! So it's a, and this so the, again, this is just repeats. It just repeats different variations of the game at this point. So now it goes to pattern two intro, and same thing. You'll notice it's the exact same thing over and over and over again uh, here. And then pattern three win, of course, same thing, win, and uh, and then it, this goes back to idle um, over here. But this should then take you to a, like a, another scene, a win scene. Something unlocks, something something happens. So. Uh, there you go. This one's pre pretty self-explanatory, especially if you've watched all the other uh, explanations. And finally, we have the standstill example here. Now, this is a puzzle we've actually used. We've made uh, a version of this based off of this game. And this uses uh, PIR sensors, passive infrared motion sensors, uh, you know, for ease, uh, to determine if people are moving around and if they stand still for long enough uh, success. So we'll kind of walk you through that. Here's your idle scene here. Now, notice that this is using a eight output flex, not a flex max. So just be aware of that because the flex only has two inputs. So we are only dealing with two inputs on this uh, and eight outputs. So uh, our show settings, uh, we have our single shot input at a one. Uh, we have our normally closed output, our maglock here, as you can see, and it is, it is currently open. It's sitting in the uh, idle state there. Uh, and then our scene settings, uh, we have the arming delay. And uh, what this means is this is to arm the the infrared, to arm the game, basically start the game and get out of the room so the uh, the, infra the motion sensor doesn't see anything. Uh, so that's basically what this scene is doing right now, as you can see. So uh, also uh, I want to see, now normally a lot of times... Uh, you would have startup delay for motion sensor up here. However, we don't need that for this game because of this idle arming delay scene. It, it kind of acts as that already. So, so if we go to the arming delay, you can see that uh, there's nothing going on here. But it is a uh, it's kind of a, a bridge to jump from. Uh, one scene to the next and you can elongate this to how long you need it right because you'll notice the next scene it goes to is armed okay so let's say you need to hit a button and it takes you I don't know 10 seconds to walk out of the room I don't know why it would but so you would put like you take this to be like 15 seconds or you have to lock something after resetting anyway regardless this can be adjusted to how long you need it to and now it goes to the armed scene so now what's happening is the infrared is looking for movement okay and what happens is right now the room is sitting still okay because input one all input one does is arm the room input two determines movement that's really all that's going on here okay uh, and you'll notice after the scene it's just looping armed okay so once you enter the room and put players into the room or the players enter the room from another room the motion sensor will de will uh, will de will detect them, and now it's going to the standstill scene. Now you'll, these little blue dots are the timer counters. Like if you wanted an LED that blinks when people stand still for them to figure this out, like that's your clue. Um, then you can leave this here. Again, I just left this as a as a uh, test. So when I was uh, like when I was a timer test when I was setting up the room. So or you could just get rid of this entirely. You don't need this to run the game. It's just part of it. 
So now you'll notice down here uh, that after scene go to uh, is if you hold still, <laughs> basically if you hold still and don't trip any of these, right? Because you'll notice that you have both of these checked. You have interruptible by, by two and one. This is kind of a reset. If you need to go, if the game has to go back in the room and start the game over or so they need to go back in and do something, this is for the game master to hit input one to reset the puzzle. This will take us to they moved, essentially. So if somebody's in the room and they move, it, it's basically like pressing a button. Yeah, that's all it is. Remember, everything is a button. So the infrared, or the motion sensor is a button. So if, you know, if they move, the button is pressed, and then it goes to this scene, which goes back to standstill. Right, it's constantly movement constantly triggers it to start this timer over. Every time, every time they move, you end up coming back to this scene over and over and over and over and over again. Okay. However, if they stand still long enough for ten seconds, you get success, and it goes to here, which then makes people cheer for you, uh, and then the door unlocks, your your light comes on, whatever your LED is here, and then it goes into the success loop which is just these two things on without a sound effect, and it just loops and loops and loops and loops until you hit one, which takes you to the arming delay, uh, and it's it, and you start the whole sequence over again. So that's... Uh, it's actually, it's actually a very easy puzzle to make, and it's a very effective a puzzle uh, that you don't see a lot in escape rooms. So uh, I encourage you to kind of mess with this one if you can. Just make sure you get the right motion sensors. Get the good ones. Don't get the little cheapy ones uh the small guys off of like uh unless you're using a small prop like a whole room you want a big infrared uh, sensor uh not one of the little dinky ones that are cheap on amazon so uh those are all of the ex uh director examples i hope uh hope this helps you understand more about how they work and how certain puzzles work and if you have any questions let us know